The Moving 13 is the latest pen display from Wacom. It's light, it's portable, and it's easy to use. My name is Paul from CGCookie.com, and I've had the pleasure of road testing it these past few weeks to see how it works with the latest version of Blender, specifically when creating content and drawing with Grease Pencil 3.0. Now, if you've never used a pen display before, like this guy, then you might want to pay attention to the following tips. Tip 1. Treat the Moving 13 like a secondary or external display. Your computer will need a port that can send display, touch and power information over a USB cable. Now most laptops released in the last few years should have this. But if your machine is like my desktop, then you're going to have to get power, display and touch to the device in another way. Now I had to pick up an adapter which can take power, a USB signal and an HDMI signal and combine them to a single USB-C output that then connects to the Moving 13. This works great for my desktop setup but it may not be ideal for portability so do check your machine specifications before considering this as your drawing device of choice. Tip 2. Because you're going to want to use a combination of pen and touch settings, Windows in particular can get confused if the Movink is not set as your main display. All that this means is that when it's connected, your taskbar and desktop shortcuts will show up on the Movink instead of your laptop screen. But this also means that settings for touch and pen should work pretty much straight away without any need to adjust further settings. Tip 3. If you're on the go and don't need your laptop open, check that your power settings will not put your computer to sleep when the lid is shut. This is handy as you can have your laptop in your bag and draw freely on the Movink. Tip 4. Finally, a lot of troubleshooting involves making sure you have the latest drivers installed and sometimes unplugging and plugging the Movink cable back in can solve a lot of your issues. So now let's get this working with Blender. For this demonstration I'm going to be running Blender 4.3 as this features the new Grease Pencil 3.0 update which comes with some exciting new tools. If you're a seasoned Blender user, you know that mouse operations and shortcut keys are very important for efficient workflow. For example, I often use Control Tab to switch modes from draw to edit or object and back. I'll need to increase and decrease brush sizes on the fly. I'll have to have an option for undo, I'll need to toggle to full display modes, and it's always handy to have keys like escape, enter or delete close to hand. Now the Movink doesn't have physical side buttons like some other displays, because the Movink is more like a Cintiq in this regard. So here is my setup for Blender. The pen can have customized buttons to emulate mouse controls. So I've created a specific Blender map for my pen, in which the Control Tab shortcut to bring up the radial menu is mapped to this extra button. I've also remapped the other buttons to emulate middle mouse and right mouse clicks. So right away, just using my pen, I can pan my view, toggle modes, and bring up contextual menus the Movings bevel has two physical buttons and two touch areas, which can be mapped to toggle various operations. It's probably a good idea to leave one of the physical buttons as your power and settings control. The second button is normally mapped to display toggle, which I chose to disable altogether because my particular setup focuses on the moving screen and I don't really want to control the primary monitor with my pen. So I remapped this button to toggle touch to selective. This is a great setting to have as you'll soon see. There are several overlay options to access modifier keys such as control, alt, shift, and in the Wacom settings, you can customize and assign several buttons in almost any way that you see fit. I like to use two grids 
of eight buttons in a two x four layout and map these to the two touch areas. Because I'm left-handed, I'll map my pen overlays to the right button. The keys I'll assign are as follows. I'll place Shift, Control, Alt and Delete here. Now the full window toggle happens to be Control Spacebar. And while I could assign Spacebar to one of these buttons and then press both Control and Spacebar, I found it easier to assign the shortcut combination to a single button, just like Undo or Control Z. And I'll assign the shortcuts for brush increase and decrease here. My next set of shortcuts deal with moving, rotating and scaling. These are mainly done in edit mode and I'll assign these to the Wacom screen keys. I'll also add escape and enter here, but leave the on-screen keyboard because this comes in very handy. Now this gives me two on-screen grids to call up at the touch of a button. I'll toggle the pin on this as well. What this means is that after you've done an operation using one of these overlays, the buttons will remain on the screen until you toggle them off. I can also move these around to wherever is best for my particular setup. Now about that toggle for touch. Well, I can set this so that it only responds when I touch the overlay buttons. This prevents any accidental gestures while drawing. However, should I want the on-screen keyboard for say, labeling a layer or a file, I have the option to toggle the touch back on. The moving displays at HD resolution. That's 1920 by 1080 pixels. So if you're used to scaling Blender for larger or higher resolution screens, that won't be necessary here. I tend to toggle full screen viewport a lot, and most tools that I require are visible in the toolbars. I can access layer information, palettes, brush assets with ease. As a long time Blender user and more recently someone who draws almost exclusively using grease pencil, the moving ticks a lot of boxes and extends the function beyond a simple drawing tablet. It's a highly customizable tool, which allows me to work in Blender the way that I've become accustomed to. Now, obviously the price point is more than a tablet, even one of a larger size, but it is considerably cheaper than even a small Cintiq. So if you were interested in entering the pen display market, this is a product worth considering.